Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So today we'll talk about plate load test. So this is a field test which is used to determine the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil and the settlement of the soil under the given load. So for performing this test, plate is placed at the desired depth. Then the load is applied gradually and the settlement for each increment of the load is recorded. So these are the two purposes for which the plate load test is performed at the site. Uh, one is the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil and the settlement under the given or the design load. Then the next thing is the apparatus required. So here you can see the uh, some of the apparatus mentioned over here. So we need plates. Uh, plates can be of circular shape and it can be as well it can be square as well. So here I have mentioned the uh, circular plates dia ranges. Uh, it ranges between 300 to 600 mm. If we are going to design a circular foundation then we use circular plates and if we are going to design a square footing then we usually use square plates. Then uh, the next thing is loading mechanism. Loading mechanism is comprised of gravity loading and the truss method. Uh, as you can see on the screen, the mechanism uh, uh, of the schematic diagram of the plate load test is shown on the screen. You can see in the detail. It is comprised of some dial gauges which are required to record the displacement and the load applied. Then we need the hydraulic jack which is required to apply the load. Then the loading mechanism, as I mentioned, it can be of two types. It can be gravity loading or it can be the truss method as well. And then we need tripod, plumb bob and spirit level, etc. Now, uh, in the procedure, we need to excavate the pit with the width uh, that should be five times the width of the plate or it can be the dia of the plate, means it must be five times the dia of the plate or it can be five times the width of the plate. So it should be excavated till the depth at which the bearing capacity of the soil is required or at the depth where we are going to design our foundation. So next thing is the application of the first increment of the load. So there are two to three criteria for uh, applying the load and the one criteria is uh, and the one criteria is to apply or to start the uh, applying, start applying the increment of the load with one tenth of the expected uh, ultimate load. Or you can start it either with a very small value. You can start it with 2.5 kilonewton or 5 kilonewton as well. And the next thing you must keep in mind while applying the load, the load should be uh, such that it should be three times of the ultimate or expected building load. It means if you are applying uh, the first increment of the load that is 5 kilonewton, then in the next interval you will apply 10 kilonewton, then 20 kilonewton. You keep on applying the load until it crosses your expected ultimate load and it should be terminated until we apply the last increment of the load and the last increment of the load should be or must be three times uh, three times of the expected uh, building load. You will keep on applying the load. Uh, for example, if you apply 5 kilonewton load in the first increment, then you need to record the settlement caused by this load after 1 minute, 4 minute, 10 minutes, 20 minutes and so on. You will keep on recording the settlement uh, under the uh, under the design or applied load until the settlement ceases or the settlement rate is 0 0.02 mm per hour. So if 5 kilonewton, uh, when you will apply 5 kilonewton load, let's say for example, then there will be change in the settlement. So you will keep on recording until there is no change in the settlement caused by that particular load. So this is how you complete the uh, 
com com complete the procedure of plate load test. Then the next thing is to determine the ultimate bearing capacity. So for that purpose, you draw a graph between the ultimate stress and the settlement uh, recorded in the field. You apply the load. Let's say you applied first uh, increment of the stress and the ultimate settlement was recorded up to 2 mm let's say then you apply next interval of the load and you recorded the settlement like 3.5 mm let's say then you apply the next increment of the load and similarly you recorded some value of the settlement let's say you obtain this graph This graph is called load settlement graph or load settlement curve that is obtained from the plate load test. Now you need to determine the ultimate stress or ultimate bearing capacity from this graph. So what is the procedure? Once you complete drawing this graph, then the first step is to extend the linear trend of the initial portion of the curve like that. Let's say it is origin O and you draw a straight line. OA. Then in the next step, you need to extend this linear trend backward. Let's say it is CB. The point where it intersects the line OA corresponding to that point, this stress is known as ultimate stress or ultimate bearing capacity. When you will divide it by 3 or Factor of safety value, you will obtain Q safe or allowable bearing capacity. Now, the next step is to determine the ultimate bearing capacity for the sandy soil. For the clay soil, uh, this is the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil. You need not to modify this value. But for the case of sandy soil, you need to apply some modifications uh, against the value obtained from this graph. So for the sandy soil, you will use this formula to obtain the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil. Here you can see ultimate bearing capacity of the soil is equals to ultimate load. You will convert this, if it is ultimate stress, you will multiply this stress with the area of the plate. Remember, it should be multiplied with the area of the plate, not the area of the pit. So, uh, you will obtain the maximum or ultimate load multiplied by width of the pit. As I mentioned, it should be five times the width or dia of the plate. So you will uh, write here the width of the pit and you will divide it, it by the width of the plate. Here B sub P uh, stands for width or size of the plate. So this is how you will obtain the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil in the sandy soil. Then you will divide this by factor of safety to obtain the allowable bearing capacity. In the next step, you need to determine the settlement. In uh, If it is a clay soil, you will use this equation. And you can see in this equation, settlement is equals to settlement of, uh, settlement of the plate, S sub P stands for settlement of the plate. Then multiply by width of the pit divided by width of the plate. So you will obtain the settlement in the clay soil. Then the next step, settlement of the uh, sandy soil. In sandy soil, you will obtain the settlement using this formula. And according to this formula, here you can see SP is the settlement of the plate. B uh, sub pit is the width of the pit multiply by width of the plate plus 0.3 then width of the plate multiplied by width of the pit plus 0.3 whole square so this formula is used for the determination of the settlement in the sandy soil the next thing is you must know the limitations of this test so there are some limitations of this test and one of the big limitation is that it has limited 
limited depth of the influence. So, first limitation is limited influence depth or influence zone. So, uh, the influence zone is uh, generally two times the size of the plate. If we are using 600 mm plate, then the influence zone will extend up to 1.2 meter or 1200 mm. So, the next limitation is it does not provide information under this, under this depth or beyond the influence zone. So, does not provide, does not provide information beyond influence zone. Remember the influence zone itself is very short and it is very small as compared to the size of the actual footy. So, size of plate is very less than size of actual footy. So, this is one of the limitation as well. So, it can be regarded as the scale effect. So, scale effect is the limitation of this test as well. Number four, no consolidation settlement information. So, it does not provide the information regarding the consolidation settlement. So, this is the fourth limitation we discussed. And the next most important thing is we excavate the pit and during the uh, excavation process, excavation process itself disturb, uh, disturbs the, uh, the soil at which the test is going to be performed. So, it means there are some errors involved in the interpretation of the bearing capacity or the settlement. So, these are some of the limitations of this plate load test. So, that's all about this test. I hope uh, you like the video. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe, share. Thank you and Allah Hafiz.